What is up, YouTube? Last night, I received a Kickstarter copy of Astronauts. But before we jump into this, I would like to remind you, if you like my videos, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also, if you want to be notified when they hit the uh, internet, um, please hit that bell icon. And then finally, if you feel the need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Uncommon Ramen, capital U, capital R. Uh, I do all this in my free time. Uh, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this content to you more often. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this. This is the Kickstarter version of Astronauts. These are the same people who designed, if I remember correctly, the same people who designed Aeon's End. Um, so it's supposed to have, su supposed to be really good. Um, uh, at, at least by namesake of the people who, who designed it. Now, um, I don't want to, I, I don't typically do unboxings for games anymore, um, just because uh, it's hard to keep up with just opening just the new games, and I'm not, I, I just don't have the room these days um, to have them, but I will continue to do Kickstarter uh, uh, showcases, because I think that it's really neat to see what's in there, and this one in particular, um, they did a really good job of, um, I guess, giving you a way to store your components. So again, this is the Kickstarter copy. So this is also going to come with the expansion and the Kickstarter exclusives, which I have already unboxed and sorted into the piles. Um, I don't remember exactly what all of them are, but I'll try to point them out when I see them. We're not going to go into great depth about the cards. I I'll show you the cards, but I'm not going to hold them too quickly or too long on the camera. Um, so let's just take a look inside really quick here. So when we open up the box here, we got a nice little flashpoint ad there. Then we have our rule book here. Um, it's a pretty typical rule book. Um, they have a lot of lot going on here as far as uh, really colorful imagery and whatnot to help uh, keep it from being just a monotonous book. It's also actually, in my opinion, pretty well set up here. It's not uh, a boring read, uh, and it certainly doesn't um, read like instructions typically do. Um, they're very clear about the bold lettering here, um, and then explaining kind of what's going on there. They give you the underlying uh, wording here to just kind of, you know, give you a heads up. This is you know, blank, whatever it does. Um, they, they have a good, good way of separating out each of the areas. So we got like the boss level tokens here. And then we stop over here, the uh, difficulty tokens. I think they did a really good job of making it clear where they're doing their separators. Um, but yeah, I, like, as I mentioned, they, they have a lot of examples here using pictures and whatnot to make it very easy to engage with. Um, so you're not just basically bonking your head on the table because there are some pretty bad rule books out there we got like a setup example which is such a good thing um because it's kind of tragic but there's a lot of places a lot of games that are relatively complicated that don't have like a setup example um so you kind of just have to wing it and hope um and while they do show the components the pictures of the components and everything um a lot of rule books well, I wouldn't say a lot of rule books. There are rule books out there that just don't kind of assume, or they do kind of assume you just know what's going on. I was really excited about this game because it is a deck builder, but it is also a cooperative deck builder. Um, and if you follow my channel enough, um, especially on, on other game unboxings, you know that my one of my favorite... Uh, Themes is space related, so this is kind of like right up that alley. Whereas Aeon Flux was more in a fantasy type sit up, setup, and I wasn't um, super interested in that theme. Although the game itself is actually pretty good, can't can't lie about that. But just not something you'd see on my shelf. So next up, we have. Well, I'll just actually show you kind of how this is set up in here. Um, they give you dividers for each of the boss decks, um, which actually ends up being kind of unnecessary because they also, at least in the Kickstarter version, they give you uh, tuck boxes for them as well. Um, but I still kind of was really happy that they had the dividers there um, because it does make it a little bit easier to just kind of glance at it and tell what we're looking at. 
Um, but I assume that the non Kickstarter versions didn't get tuck boxes. So you will get dividers at least, which I think is really cool. Um, and then you have on this side, we have where all the boss uh, sheets and character sheets are. And then another area with dividers for all the cards and everything. And we'll go into that momentarily. And let's just get that there. And we're going to take a look at these little player boards. So we have all the boss boards here. Um, these are the ones that are core to the game. So we have Furion. Um, it just kind of tells you the rules about Furion and you know what level he is and so on. Oh, I didn't finish punching this guy. I didn't realize he had so many punchable parts. Anyway, uh, we have Architect 0815 or 0815. I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be a zero or an O, um, which I also believe just is part of the core set. We have Lunaris. Then the next one we have up here is Continua. Um, Continua, I believe, is a Kickstarter exclusive. Um, this guy you will not see in the core box. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this guy plays. Um, I'm sure sometime, sometime down the line for like promo events or something, they'll have these available, like especially at uh, conventions and whatnot. And then the final guy we're looking at is actually part of the expansion. So this is the Fission Parasite. And this guy is part of the parasite which if i mean part of the parasite part of the um expansion and if i remember correctly that will become um retail available if not already being retail available so you got the fission parasite now the next step is going to be characters and for the life of me i cannot remember which one's are specific to the core versus which ones are Kickstarter ones. So we're just going to kind of take a look at them. Um, you know, and you, if you guys know, you know. Um, so we got Christina here. Just kind of goes over, you know, abilities. We got something on the back that kind of goes over the personnel files, telling you stuff about that. And then it shows the starting hand and the starting deck, which is just a really cool... Uh, little detail that they've added there. And I, I believe this is core. I, if I look at the box, I might be able to tell which ones are the core characters. So I, I believe this one's core. Um, then we have uh, Gavril or Gavriel. Uh, alien looking guy with a gauntlet of some sort. His ability right there. We got his personnel file here. Starting hand, starting deck. I think this is really cool because... As far as deck building goes, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of game designers have been uh, exploring the idea of having unique, unique decks per player, um, which isn't typical for a deck builder. Uh, in a deck builder, usually um, each player gets the same deck at the beginning, and then they, they upgrade it at, uh, as they go. So I'm actually really um, excited about the idea of having unique decks like that. Then we've got Toli. Who has a weird fin around their neck. Uh, again, I do believe this one is a core character to the uh, core box. And then we have Silas, who looks like a human wearing a power suit. So their version of Iron Man, maybe? I don't know. Um, also a character, I believe, that is a core to the the core box. Then we have Z-A-K Zack, who looks like a sniper robot. Um, this is yet another one that I believe is core. Um, got the uh, personnel file, starting deck, starting cards. And then finally we have Nazma, which again I believe is core to this game. Um, Nazma, who looks kind of like a Futuristic druid of some sort. We got our personnel file here and our starting deck in hand. So next up, um, I think this particular one 
is either a Kickstarter exclusive or a expansion character. So we have Deleth. Um, Deleth is a four-armed lady. We have her personnel file here. And she has her starting stuff right here. And then finally, this guy again is either Kickstarter exclusive or he is a expansion character. I know one of these is Kickstarter exclusive. Both of them might be. Uh, I have a feeling one of these is part of the expansion, but having the Kickstarter box, they didn't give you a separate box for the uh, expansion. So I really don't know. So if you did get the Kickstarter uh, version of this game... Um, the expansion was included without a box in the game box already, in the core box already. So I don't know how to tell the difference. I assume that, you know, it's it's relatively easy to tell that the, the Fish and Parasite boss deck is, is part of the expansion. But beyond that, I don't know if there's a way to, to delineate the cards. And I'll look for symbols just to see, but... I don't know. So anyway, this is Alexios. Sorry. Uh, personnel file right there. Starting hand. Sorry, I kind of just flipped that really quickly there. You might be wondering what all these little cutouts are. Um, if you follow the Kickstarter, then you know exactly what they are. But these are uh, because the wooden cubes that they give you. Not cubes, cylinders that they give you. Let's see if I can find them. Um, these are ways to track each of these, and you'll see there's a blue, uh, red, and a, uh, a yellow one, and you'll see that each of these tracks is, is indicated by those colors as well. Um, the black one, I think, is for the, the boss, but you can see that they just made these so that um, you can slot them in, and, you know, they go where the board goes. <laughs> um, instead of doing the double layer, which I thought was interesting, um, I really would have liked to see the double layer but I, I get where you know cost is kind of a thing there um so yeah that is the characters that are in this box uh if you get the kickstarter exclusive um like i said i'm not sure which ones are or if they're part of the expansion um which ones are part of the expansion and i'm not really sure which ones are exclusive to just the kickstarter uh, uh campaign these are the um the cylinders that you use to keep track of the different gauges that they have there. One of those I know is for health. Uh, the other two I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm sure one of those is for energy and maybe shields. Well, it says... It says power, health, and... Slots. It just says slots. I don't know what slots means. I don't know if that's like your ability to carry items, maybe. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, in here, we're going to have a bunch of different tokens. Uh, so some of these big tokens here with the, the big old numbers on them um, and the different color than red are uh, keep track of, of who goes next, basically. So you'll see these, to these little square tokens and they have numbers on them and they're a certain color. Like this one is one to two, three to four. We got four right here. Um, these keep track of player initiative order. Um, because, uh, as you play this game, if I remember correctly, uh, depending on, I'm not sure how they randomize it, if it's based off of some sort of speed mechanic or whatever, um, it determines at what point you will be going, uh, as opposed to just having each player, uh, take their turn, then the boss takes their turn, then each player takes a turn. There's going to be an initiative tracker to kind of keep track of whose turn it is and so on and so forth. And then the final, uh, set of tokens in here are going to be health tokens. So we got our fives and then we have these little guys that are, uh, just one health. And I don't know why they have these because um obviously the players themselves can keep track of it with a little cylinder but let's just take a look at one of these so it looks like yeah i guess it makes sense to have that because um you have to be able to keep track of how much damage the bosses have taken so that's just a good indicator this is just a way to indicate how much damage the bosses have taken which is something very similar to sentinels of the multi multiverse if you are uh, familiar with that game uh, so we are going to take a look at what I think they called Homeworlds, yes. But before we do that, there are 
four cards in here that are really long cards and they have a lot of information on them and as you can imagine these are your player crib sheets these are the uh cheat sheet for how your turn goes and how the boss turn goes and there's four of them um because the maximum number of players for this game is four beauty of this game is that you can actually play it solo um i'm not exactly sure how that works out but uh, i think that's pretty cool the next long cards you're going to receive um, are Homeworld cards. At least one of these is Kickstarter exclusive. Um, I don't know if any of these are uh, expansion specific or if all of them are. I'm not really sure how that works because, again, they didn't give you a, a separate box for all the expansion material. So we have New Atlantis. You have Nisarin. Uh, you have Quaris. Elong. Silerix. Okay, so the other ones all had numbers 180, 187, 188, 186, 187, 188, 189. This one actually says P03. So, Silurex is probably a Kickstarter exclusive. And this says OS35. So, Orion 3. Okay, this is... I think this one is um, expansion. And I can't for the life of me remember what they called the expansion. But I bet you that it starts with OS. Or that each word's starting letters are O and S. So... Yeah, that's what I'm going to assume. So we got Orion 3 plus Orion. Yeah, because Orion was the first word of the expansion, if I remember correctly. Orion something or other. So yeah, this one is part of the expansion. So when you get the retail copy of the expansion, uh, if you don't already have it, it will come with the Orion 3. However, the Silurix was a Kickstarter exclusive. So in order to get that, you're probably going to have to wait for special events or something to that effect. Um if you even care. I mean, some people don't really necessarily care about the exclusives and whatnot. Um, next up, we have these little dials here. There's one for the boss, and there's also one for, I believe, your home world. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the idea here is that you don't want your home world to take too much damage. Um, I'm not really sure what the boss dial keeps track of. Like I said, we have all these damage tokens right here to help keep track of damage, and I'm not sure really what the... This must be a countdown for when it just becomes impossible to win, maybe. Or I don't know. But either way, you've got these dials. Uh, they have, a, you know, they, you're, they're they typical. They go up to 99, basically. Um, and they're on both of them. So just a really interesting dial. There's nothing super special about these guys. The back is just a, you know, typical black back. Next up, in case the game wasn't difficult enough for you, each of the bosses has more difficulty to them. Um, and it's really kind of cool because there's quite a few of these here. Um, you got level two, and then you have level two nightmare. You have level three, and then level three nightmare. You have expert, and you have nightmare. So each of the characters has these, um, but one of the characters actually has quite a few more of them. So you have the, the fish and parasite here. We have level two, level three and expert and on the other side shows nightmare for continua we have level two level three and expert and then again on the back of each of these you'll have the nightmare version of them and then for the for furion we have level two level three and expert for uh lunaris we have level two level three and expert and then for architect 0815 we have level two level three level four level five level six expert and then of course the nightmare version of all of those so it actually makes me really curious about this character specifically or this villain specifically because that's a lot of levels and is it because this character is easier or is it because this is the final boss or I don't really understand why this one got so many extra things to it. Um, you'll notice that on each of these, they what it basically does is it gives 
some new extra ability that wouldn't normally happen. And when you flip it over, the Nightmare Level 2 has something completely different. Um, so they're all going to do something like that. I don't want to go through each of these tiles and just and showcase each different thing that they do. Um, when you buy the game, just know that you're going to have these, except um, for those of you who did not Kickstarter or Kickstart it, you won't have the Continua tiles. And for those of you who didn't get the expansion, you won't have the Fish and Parasite ones until you get the expansion in retail. Now, I want to go to the cool thing here, or at least the thing that I thought was pretty cool, which was the tuck boxes. Usually, I'm not a big fan of tuck boxes. I, I think they are a waste of space, but for some reason with this one, I was really excited about it because they separate the boss decks, and you don't have to go through all the trouble of tracking down all the different boss cards. Um, they are just here for you. So we'll open up this tuck box. I haven't sleeved anything yet. Um... There's 215 cards in here, folks. Uh, that includes all Kickstarter exclusives and the expansion. I don't know how many cards are in there if you don't have the either of those. Um, so this is the Continua deck. And one of the things you'll notice in here right away is there's a new turn order card. This is the only uh, villain that has an extra turn order card to put into the turn order randomizer. And it indicates the temporal turn. So very cool there. Uh, like I said, only character, only uh, villain that has one of those cards in there. So I just separate it with the Continua stuff. And then we have right here the Continua cards. And I think they're all like that. So we have uh, Theorem 23, uh, Wretched Promethean, Quantum Prototype, Atomic Prototype. Uh, Quantasource, uh, Infinity Prototype, Critical Singularity, uh, Recession, uh, Chronoid Experiment, Rewind, And endothermic reaction. So these are the cards that are going to be specifically for our Continua uh, boss. And again, this was for Kickstarter. Uh, I do not think the retail copies will receive the Continua boss. Next up, we're going to take a look at Lunaris. The next uh, three bosses that we're going to look at are the ones that come to, with the uh, core set specifically. Um, and then we will look at the Fission um, Parasite afterward that card got stuck in there so um checking the back here these are all just boss deck cards there's nothing um special in this one so we got moonbeam uh sizzing stalker oh maybe maybe this is a boss health tracker because it looks like there are minions that have health Maybe that is a boss health tracker. I don't, I'm confused if, at the very least. Uh, Celestial Bombardment. Astral Sentry. Celestial Absorption. Celestial Surge. Observer of the Crescent. Walker Among the Stars. Harbinger of Ascension. Nebula Cannon. Orbital Squire. Refractor. Runic Scope, Penumbra Blade, Antimatter Barrier, and Tactical Schematics. Oh, there's one more. Sorry. Lunar Crescendo. 
Okay, so that is the cards for Lunaris. They only had two normal minions. The rest of the minions were augmented. Interesting. I don't know what that means. Um, as you can imagine, haven't had a chance to play this game. I literally got it yesterday. Next up is Architect 0815. Again, I'm really happy about these tuck boxes. Typically don't really care for tuck boxes, but this, I guess, made sense to me. It spoke to me on a different level. Um, all of Okay, so what we have here, we have Architect 08815, and then we have Architect 08815 droid deck. So the first thing we're going to be looking at are all the different droids. We have Combat Droid 004. And we have two of those so far. Three, four... We got Interrogation Droid 023. I'm sure we have a couple of those. Yeah. We got Assault Droid Type C. We got four of those guys. We got Tactical Blitz. So I think that ends the uh, yeah droid deck. So we got Tactical Blitz. Factory Override. Magnet, Magnetostorm, sorry, Magnetostorm. Dark Iron Commander. Siege Automaton. And what I believe to be the last card, Dark Iron Programming. So that is Architect 0815. Next up, we'll take a look at Furion. If I remember correctly, Furion himself is the um, recommended first fight. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Um, it was the It's the one that's showcased on the front of the box. It is also the one that you see in the Kickstarter page is like one of the first things they showcase. So I'm almost positive it's the first one that you're supposed to fight. Um, but I don't know. So there's two different decks here. We got the uh, Furion Artillery deck, and then we have the Furion Boss deck. Uh, in the Artillery deck, we got uh, Void Charged Mortar. We got Starless Siege Engine. We got Anti Particle Shield. Uh, Synchrotron Blaster. Uh, Pinpoint Torpedo. Uh, Frostbiter. Yeesh. And then I do believe... No, nope, we're still in artillery. We got Combustion Grenade. This is a lot. A lot of very dead people in that picture. Uh, Sonic Blade. And then we are out of the artillery deck. Now we are looking at boss cards. We have Unrelenting Onslaught. Titan Land Rover. Titan Barrage. Wrath the Conqueror, Rage Knight, Thermian Barricade, Titan Mounted Cannon, Improvised Weaponry, that's kind of terrifying. And then finally, we have support Fire Support Specialist. That guy seems doomed. So that is our Furion deck. So the next deck we're going to take a look at is actually the expansion um, boss. That is the Fission Parasite. That was something that, through um, support, um, was, was unlocked. Um, because otherwise, I don't know if they were going to wait to unlock it or what was going to happen but because we 
they had enough support, they were able to get this guy out there too. So Fish and Parasite has two decks as well. So we have the Fish and Parasite Exo Sludge deck, and then we have the Fish and Parasite deck. So we're going to look at the Exo Sludge deck. We have just Exo Sludge as a minion. I wonder if the whole thing is that. Looks like every card in here is Exo Sludge. Yeah. Okay. So that's really unique, I guess. Is that it? Yeah, so the the uh, Fish and Parasite Exo Sludge deck consists of one card, but many copies of it, which is the Minion Exo Sludge, um, which it looks like it's a pretty bad one to have in play. I mean, just activate, destroy a card with the lowest cost in the supply. It can be that could get really bad. Uh, next up, we have the boss deck itself. We have Irradiated Irradiated Venom. We have Contaminate. Venomized Horde. Contagion Beast. Ooh, that's like a mixture of a Tyranid and a Xenomorph and a whole bunch of terrifying nightmare fuel. Toxic Momentum. Rough. Cosmic Infection. Nebulae Infection. Nuclear Contagion. Virustrum. And uh, Astral Infection. Astral Infection. Lots of infections. I'm not sure I like this guy. This guy kind of seems scary. So that is your Fish and Parasite deck. Um, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. That one looked kind of mean. All right. Nope, I put that in backward. Figures. How dare. Okay. So the next thing, and it's pretty much the last thing, we're going to take a look at all the different cards for the heroes, um, starting with the power cards. Um, if you have the Kickstarter exclusive deck, well, actually, I don't know if that's the truth. This might come with the uh, retail copy as well, but it just kind of gives you this card here. Um, it's not necessarily a playable card. It just tells you how to use the cards that come with the expansion. Um, but on here, it doesn't say anything as to how to denote the difference between it and the expansion cards, because these symbols on the bottom are all on the core cards as well, because um, each character has a different... Um, at least I think they do. They have a different symbol that represents uh, cards that are more effective with them. Is that That's what I assume, anyway. I, I could be actually completely wrong about that, considering I haven't read the rules yet. Uh, like I said, just got this yesterday. So the first set of cards we're going to be looking at is the power cores. So you have a divider here that shows you what the uh, power, where the power cores go. And so this is the power core card. Um, you can see right here, um, if, I, if I'm reading this correctly, it costs zero. Um, and you just gain one little lightning bolty thing, which I think is probably by power if I had to uh, take a wild guess on that. And there's just quite a few of these um, because I believe that um, a large portion of these actually start in your player deck. And again, I could be very wrong about that, but well, I mean, I guess we could just look. It does say three power cores, so there you go. Not not as wrong as I thought I was. All right, next up, we are going to take a look at the blasters again. This is just um, starter cards. I don't know if these will be part of a supply later on that you can continue to buy from, but I kind of doubt that. Uh, I imagine they have enough in here to fit each of the characters. And there's quite a few characters to pick from, especially if you have the uh, Kickstarter stuff. So um, these are the blaster cards. And they're pretty simple here. Blaster, weapon, zero, attack, deal, one damage. So it's a straightforward card. And there are quite a few of these as well. So again, we're just going to keep moving on. The next thing we're going to look at is each of the different supply decks. You'll see this is the supply deck for the shield symbol, or what at least looks vaguely like a shield. And you can see the art on the divider. Um, I think it's the same on both sides. Um, so we're looking at cards like Augmented Ballista. Warp Thrower. 
Vibrax. Arc Flare. That's pretty cool. Uh, Velocity Revolver. Okay. Looks like a fancy looking Gatling gun. Uh, Scrambler. Probably some sort of uh, grenade type thing. Costs a lot too. Holy crap. Uh, Echo Ray. And Fusion Sniper. Oh, there's still more. Fusion Sniper. And then it seems like this is the last one. We have uh, Distortion Gauntlet. And I'm looking at these again. It looks like these have numbers down the corner. Okay, so this is actually a Kickstarter exclusive. This is PO2. Um, there is one other one in here, right here, which is the expansion. So you'll receive this when you get the expansion to the game. Okay, I'm going to try and point those out when I see them. So next up, we're going to be looking at the supply deck with the wings, right? And then you can kind of see the artwork here on the divider. So that's pretty cool. So this first card is actually an expansion card. This comes with the uh, Orion expansion. Um, so it's Energy Glaive. And there are two of these. These are going to be Corset cards. So we have the Disruptor Pistol. The Phase Shield. Uh, the Repulsor. The Psionic Needle. Uh, the Ballistic Array. The Lightning Cutlass. And that's it. And it doesn't look like there was any Kickstarter exclusives in that one, so just keep moving on. The next supply deck we're going to look at is what looks to be a couple of shooting stars inside of a circle thing, and the, there's the art for it. All right, starting with OS01, so this is uh, a card that you will get with the expansion, which leads me to believe that actually the character Delith is part of the expansion as well as the character Alexio. So there might not be a Kickstarter exclusive character. Um, so this is a tactical visor. Again, this is for the expansion. We got the bio converter. The Magnetic Holster. The Deflector Field. The Oracle Hub. Uh, Nexus Port. Uh, Psionic Tether. Uh, targeting Sync. Quantum Hack. And then this is another Kickstarter exclusive card. This is Plasmoid Stims. Um, you will not receive this in the retail copy, if I remember correctly, um, or the expansion. Next up, we are looking at the supply deck that looks like an upside down star. Uh, we've got that uh, Sharpshooter character in the art here. Right, starting with, uh, this is for the expansion. This is OS02, so Nova Cloud will be in the expansion. This will also be in the expansion, Stellar Wake. And then these are the core ones. We got Dark Star Aura. Uh, Hyperion Anomaly. Uh, Nebula Wave. Uh, Solarius Cell. Uh, Heliosphere. And that is it for those guys. 
Then we have the shield supply deck. Um, this one actually looks like a shield with a little um, ring around it, unlike the other one that kind of just looked like a hollow shape of a shield. All right, so first off, we have the expansion stuff. This is going to be uh, Chronoplasm. Then we have Cosmic Particulate. The uh, Cosmic Particulate uh, on is going to be Corset stuff. So then we have um, Chromarium Halo. Magfield. Tachyon Flow. Antimatter Current. Infinitium Core. That seems to be it for that one. And then I think this is the last supply deck, and then we move into unique starter cards. So the next, the final supply deck is going to be uh, what looks to be a planet with a, something orbiting it. Uh, and you can see here we have the artwork of one of the characters with a big green hammer. Um, the first couple of cards we got here are from the expansion. So Howler will be in the expansion. And then we also have Virtual Sentry, which will be in the expansion. A couple of those. And then we move into the corset stuff. So we got the fractal grenade, fractal grenade. We got the particle cannon. The grav hammer. The scatter beam. And then finally, we have the Peacekeeper. I like it. I like that it's called the Peacekeeper, but then right underneath, it's a weapon, which I just feel so, so wrong. So wrong about that. All right, next up is the unique starter cards. So these are cards that each of the characters are going to be calling for. You can see right here the art for that one. Um, before I get into that, I'm going to look at the back of this card real quick so we can see. It shows that this person wants... Um, three power cores, a replicatrix, and a blaster. So I'm assuming that this replicatrix card is actually a uh, unique starter card um, because you can see right here in total, she's gonna have seven uh, power cores, two blasters, which we already uh, um, identified that the blasters and the power cores are common cards, um, and then one replicatrix. And then if we look at another character um, Alexios, he has the polarized cobalt, but then again, three, three, two, and one. So it, it seems to be that that's what the case is. And so if we look at this right here, this is the polarized cobalt. So it is part of the unique starter card. So that's what makes your deck a little bit unique by comparison to the other players. Um, so this is part of OS, um, OS. So this is part of the expansion. So Alexios does come with the expansion. Um, so this is the Polarized Cobalt, and then you can see here, this is the Replicatrix, again, from the OS set. So neither of the characters, the new characters, the two new ones, Delith or Alexios, are Kickstarter exclusives, but they they do not come with a core set. They come with the um, uh, expansion. So if you did not back for the expansion, you will have to wait till it becomes retail available. So that is the Replicatrix. And then we have the Galvanic Current. The Bright Root. The Rocket Gauntlet. Uh, the Asalium. Uh, the molecular, molecular Edge. Molecular Edge. And then finally we have the uh, Tectonic Repeater. Tectonic Repeater, that sounds insanely powerful. 
So those are the unique cards that will start in each of the different characters. So if you're not playing that character, you're not going to see that card. And then the final set of cards we're looking at are the turn order cards. And I assume that this is how they determine um, the randomization of which character get, or which player gets to go first. Um, and that's why we have those little tokens to set up as we reveal the card, the, the turn order so that we can... Um, make sure that we we have a random setup every time so we have and and you can see the back of these are all they all just say turn order which means that they are um meant to be randomizers so we got two player one cards two player two cards a player three card a player wild card two one two player cards two three four player cards and then two boss turn player cards um and that is the turn order cards um which I think is a really cool concept, honestly. And that is actually everything that you get with the um, with the box if you have the Kickstarter version. There's going to be significantly less. Well, I guess I wouldn't say significantly less. You you miss out on three cards and I think one home world if you didn't kickstart it. So that's not really that big of a deal. And you miss out on the um, expansion content until they make it available to retail which it won't be long if anything they might already um, have had enough funding to release them both at the same time so um that is everything for astro knights um for the time being this this game is very expandable they the the way that this is set up um, makes it really easy for them to uh, find a way to basically expand on this as they please um but yeah that's uh, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Uh, I will be removing any negative comments, so let's just keep it positive, guys. And uh, until next time, peace.